Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. We're going to have a fun show today. We're going to talk about brucellosis. Brucellosis or bangs in cattle is something that we've eradicated in this country. We still calf hood vaccinate and we still have the potential of, of that disease popping up if we don't stay on top of it. We have Dr. Justin Smith, who's the Deputy Animal Health Commissioner for the state of Kansas here. It's going to be a great show. Thanks for joining me. As dependable as the sunrise, in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life. It's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do, every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility. Closed captioning brought to you by Vet Gun with Amel and new AMA Abamectin Vet Caps, the one two punch against horn fly resistance from AgriLabs. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Folks, welcome to the show. Dr. Smith, welcome. Glad to be here. Thank you, Dan. Folks, as I mentioned in the opening, this is Dr. Justin Smith, and he is the Deputy Animal Health Commissioner here in the state of Kansas, works with the Kansas Department of Agriculture, um, a former practitioner, uh, Western Kansas, um, wealth of knowledge, wealth of experience. We're lucky to have him in the state of Kansas and we're lucky to have him on the show. We're going to talk about something that's pretty common, but uh, maybe we haven't thought about the history of what's actually going on. It's, it's brucellosis, folks, in cows or, or bangs. Exactly. So, yeah, brucellosis has is, is been around for, for uh, a long time. Um, actually, it was actually founded in the United States back in the early 1900s. And oh so, uh, but uh, we've had it here in the United States up at that point in time. Um, luckily for us, uh, we are free here in the state of Kansas and have been free for uh, close to 20 years now. So, yeah. and it comes with you know kind of the history. This is this is a disease that not only causes disease in cattle, but it can cause disease in humans. Um, but more importantly, we decided it's something we need to eradicate. Very true, very true. It is a disease, it is a zoonotic disease, uh, so we do catch it from uh, some of our domestic species that we deal with. Uh, we have basically four variants that we deal with. Uh, there's uh, affects sheep and goats, uh, swine, cattle, and some of our camelids and cervids as well. Uh, so we do deal with it. Um, it's, it's one of them things that uh, we can't control and we do have the ability to, to eradicate it, and we have eradicated it here in the state. Yeah, and it was quite a, an eradication process uh, back in the 60s and, and 70s definitely. where we went out and bled every cow. Most definitely. Mo Our predecessors did a knock-up job as far as getting rid of this disease, and so uh, the animals' uh, herds were, were tested on a routine basis, where they went to sales, where they, wherever they were commingled, they were tested on a routine basis. Uh, positive animals were identified, and then herds that positive animals came from were, were done in a test and remove type process until they were cleaned and cleaned them herds up. And that's how, you know, being from the feed yard world, we had quarantine feed yards, and that's where the term quarantine feed yard came from is you had a bangs positive, we'd brand her mm -hmm. and then send her to the yard and she didn't go anywhere but slaughter. Slaughter only, exactly. And still our, our sale barns today have quarantine pens uh, for okay. a, kind of a holdover for that purpose is because as the animals were identified at the sale barn, because there are a test they can do uh, right on, on site, uh, a screening test, and as they were found positive, they were put in them pens and sold for slaughter purposes only. 
So, so you know, kind of laying the groundwork, we've done the test and remove, and then we vaccinate to control as well. That's very true. Very and true. so we have the two different biosecurity. So when we, we uh, we'll save the vaccination part and kind of for the cap hood right. uh, segment exactly. of the show. But but exactly. um, you know, it's one of those things that that's tremendous program USDA programs, correct? That is true. They provide the, the support and the indemnity for it. Exactly. Okay. So if we do find a positive, we do have an indemnity. Yes, we do. Cool. So people yes, can be reimbursed. Folks, this is Dr. Justin Smith. He's with the Deputy Animal Health Commissioner here in the state of Kansas. We're talking about brucellosis, bangs. When we come back, we're going to talk more about how that has an impact here on our industry in the U.S. and how we're controlling it. You're watching Doc Talk. We appreciate you watching the show. More after these messages. Hey folks, Dr. Dan here. Thanks for joining us for our Cattle First Minute as sponsored by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica. And you know, today's Cattle First is talking about how to run a squeeze chute. And a lot of times when we run a squeeze chute, it's raise the tailgate, drop the tailgate on the head of the one behind, um, let the calf run through and ricochet off the front of the chute. And, and there are just some things that we can do to decrease injuries in the chute as a cattle. Make sure that we use the sides effectively to catch. If you have a hydraulic chute that we use the sides, Make sure that we have the hydraulics not set too high, okay? We want it to be at that 650 to 800 PSI on, on the hydraulics. But being careful that we don't miscatch a calf by its temples and not adjust it, or if you catch one by the hips and you're out there with the tagging gun in one hand and the syringe in the other doing the cha-cha trying to get it vaccinated, it's best to just turn that calf loose so neither you nor the calf get hurt. If my calves start healthy and stay healthy, I've got a good shot at making money. That is why I trust Clostrix. It gives my calves the protection they need until their own immune systems kick in. Calf raisers trust Colostrix colostrum supplements. Colostrix is USDA licensed and proven effective. When your money is on the line, trust Colostrix. When you're in the cattle business, no matter how much it's a business, it still starts with cattle. It's this basic notion that sits at the core of how we approach things at Beringer Engelheim. We understand when you put the cattle first, it just naturally leads to doing the right things. If you want to do well in this business, you start by doing right. Take care of the cattle, and they'll take care of you. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. This segment brought to you by the new hired hand portable cow sprayer. For more information, visit cowsprayer.com. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with our special guest, Dr. Justin Smith, who's the Deputy Animal Health Commissioner for the state of Kansas, which means you pretty much have your finger on the pulse of, of all regulatory veterinary medicine and, and internal movement, external movement of animals, quite a bit of yes, exactly. job, isn't there? Exactly. Um, Kansas, uh, we have a tremendous amount of, of movement in and out of the state, and, and you're right, it all comes through our office as far as being able to validate that that is a, a legal movement as well as a, a movement that we have our hands on in case we need to do some, some follow-up and trace backs on, on disease purposes. Okay, so kind of talk me through, because I think that sometimes producers, are, and maybe we just start out with, like, let's just use Kansas as an example, but when do I need to get a health paper? Sure. Any time that an animal comes into the state of Kansas, unless they are coming to slaughter or to a livestock market, must have a current CVI or a current certificate of veterinary inspection. Done. So if they're going to, so if they're going to a packing plant, they don't need. They a do not plant. need a health paper. No. And then a market, define that. A, a, a livestock market? Mar auction market, one of our livestock markets in really? the state of Kansas. So they could come in from Colorado and go to a livestock market. Now to leave that market, do they need a health paper? If they're leaving, if they're going back to the other state or going back across state lines, yes, they will need a health paper. Okay. But the reason for that is we have veterinary inspectors at that at them livestock markets, and so oh. they can they serve as the inspections of them. And animals. we have them at the slaughter facilities too, exactly. USDA, anti mortem inspections. Exactly. Okay, so it makes 
perfect sense. So then places that they're going that there won't be veterinary inspection from the state or federal level is when they have to have the 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 accredited veterinarian yep. at the state of origin. The state of origin, a preemptive inspection exactly that makes a heck of a lot of sense doesn't it folks so 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 then when it comes to brucellosis what kind of things do we have to document on brucellosis well fortunately the united states is free okay uh, every state in the nation is free right at this point in time and and we don't expect otherwise now there are some areas that are around the yellowstone that we consider our designated surveillance areas mm -hmm. uh, they have an endemic problem with their wildlife population out there and so there is an area that's deemed within them three states around yellowstone that that are deemed to have uh, brucellosis problems so for that the state of Kansas requires any animals that are coming in for the purposes of breeding or anything over 18 months of age must have a brucellosis test. Okay. Prior to coming. So in. that's really the only place that that bangs winds up being on the the health papers is in that Yellowstone. In that area. Yellowstone area. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. And then what other things? I mean, if you know, we got a minute here till we go to the break. But what things are are the most common then that have to be on a health paper? Is there anything that we have to test for? It depends on the state. I it depends say. on the state, definitely. Here in the state of Kansas, we definitely require a trick test on our incoming bulls, yep. a trichomoniasis test. Um, depending on where they're coming from, uh, like I said, we do require a brucellosis test on some of the swine, some of the uh, pseudorabies on some of the swine, but the cattle, we really, uh, basically, we're free. Uh, now, our, our heifers, our dairy heifers, do require a TB test prior to coming into the state of Kansas, or a tuberculosis test. You bet. Well, it's a extremely interesting, extremely big job. I'm glad that we've done the groundwork and, and, and don't have to do all the testing anymore. I know it was a pain probably for when people were going through it, but boy, they made it easier on us. Oh, very much so. It was a pain and it was costly. Yep. It was costly. But it's uh, saving us money now. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. So, folks, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about calf hood vaccinating your heifers, something that everybody does, probably sitting there, do it, don't think about it, don't, understand, don't know why we're doing it, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that when we come back from the break. You're watching Doc Talk. More with Dr. Smith after these messages. When looking at the number of farm and ranch operations, the USDA Census of Agriculture says cattle and beef production is the largest single segment of American agriculture. The census also says the average age of the American cattle farmer or rancher is in the late 50s. In order to support the continuous supply of U.S. beef, these producers need to do some business planning to successfully transfer their cattle operations to younger, independent producers. Uh, I'm Joe Mushrush with Mushrush Red Angus. and. Uh, my ancestors have been in this part of the world. Well, they walked in after the Civil War from Virginia. My dad was the start of Mushrush Red Angus. When we come back from college, we had about 100 cows. Was working mainly part-time. My wife Connie and I, had, once we took over, tried to expand rapidly, making it into a full-time uh, operation. We have told our kids that any of them that wish to return to the ranch, why we would do our level best to uh, make a spot for them and so far our oldest son Daniel is now back full time with us and some of the others have expressed a desire to return and so we have dedicated most of what we do into creating a spot and making a viable entity for the, anybody that wants to come back. In, in an effort to get more of our family back on the business, we've started our own meat company. And so when we can take, say, a flat iron or a petite tender, and our local packing house has the knowledge and the ability to turn that into a higher retail cut, we'll sell those retail cuts quicker, and we'll sell them for three to four times the price of what we would sell them without some of those cuts being available to us. The beef checkoff allows us to do something that we can't do on our own. We do not have the, the time or resources or the knowledge to go out and approach consumers on our own. By pooling our resources with other producers, it allows us to reach those consumers that we otherwise would not have any way to reach. And by combining our resources and our voice, why hopefully we can make a difference. And I hope one day that my children will be here on the ranch. And so we need to be able to be responsive to the demands of future generations that we may not even be aware of. And the checkoff helps our industry do that. It's easy to spot the man who uses Synanthic. With lower volume and less waste, Synanthic steps up your deworming routine. 
Get more deworming with less dewormer at Synanthic.com. When it comes to stopping horn flies, cattlemen love their vet gun. Today they love it even more because vet gun now has a one-two punch with two vet cap insecticides. New AIM A abamectin can be used in rotation with AIM L for effective in-season control. Each delivers a unique mode of action to manage horn fly resistance. So start your in-season rotation program with AIM L and new AIM A abamectin vet caps from AgriLabs. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson with Dr. Justin Smith, who's the Deputy Animal Health Commissioner here in the state of Kansas working for the Department of Agriculture. And we're talking about brucellosis. And, and so talk me through, you know, because you say, you hear people say, well, I got to bang those heifers or I got to calf hood vaccinate those heifers. This is really part of this brucellosis control, correct? That is correct. Uh, the the CAFID vaccination has been a, a phenomenal vaccination, and uh, it's helped us tremendously in the in the, the ability to eradicate this out of our dom domestic herds. So the CAFID vaccination is a, a vaccination that's available out there. It is only done or allowed to be done by an accredited veterinarian on your herd. Uh, it is a two cc dose. Um, the vaccination period is anywhere between four and ten months of age okay. on on cattle. Uh, I say that th th that's certain states. Here in the state of Kansas, we do four to twelve months. Four to what, twelve, 12 months. months of age. Now this is a live that is vaccine. True. <laughs> that is, is true. This is actually you know the, now the the RB fifty one mm -hmm. vaccine, um, which is a live brucellosis vaccine and one that you don't want to inject yourself very much so no the the injection component is is it is a live vaccine it's a dangerous vaccine uh, granted the rb51 strain that we're using now is much safer than the old strain we used to use we used to use the old strain 19 uh, which was actually the field form of the vaccine of the disease that we had out there and so uh, but the rb51 is safer but it still is is a human health hazard and it's definitely one of them things that if you do happen to stick yourself or or or, or be contaminated by a contaminated needle, you need to make sure and call your medical doctor right away. Yeah, and, and you can get on antibiotics and, and uh, you know, the, probably the most famous case of human uh, brucellosis was the James Harriet. Yes, exactly. <laughs> that, uh, all creatures grain small. Exactly. He, he suffered from, yep. from self-induced brucellosis. Right. Um, but let's, let's uh, so I'm going to vaccinate those heifers. What kind of paperwork or, or you know, we have the, is it the orange ear tag sure, that goes sure. in there? So uh, when your veterinarian does it, uh, they will do, a, like I say, a 2cc vaccine, and then they will put a tattoo in that, that ear of that animal that they vaccinate. And that tattoo is the official documentation or the official identification of that animal being vaccinated. Um, it will have a, depending on the vaccine they use, it will have an R and then a USDA shield in the year that it, they were done in. In addition to that, they will put in an orange metal clip, or now we have actually orange RFID CAFID vaccination tags. Cool. So, um, so they will put that tag in. Honestly, that's an indi a individual identification, but the official part of that vaccination is the tattoo. Is, okay. is the tattoo. And so now, which animals are required okay. for CAFID vaccination? So if I have heifers, they're going to feed yard no, they don't have to be right in the state of Kansas. We have no requirements on CAFID vaccinations, so okay. it's, it's strictly a producer uh, choice. Um, but the vaccine, the ones that we do vaccinate are the heifers. Uh, we definitely don't want to do any of our bulls. If, we, in fact, if we do that, we need to consider that being a steer at that point in time. Yeah. Um, but because they'll show up positive for for the testing that we do if we would if most we would, if we ran bangs testing on that bull. Most definitely, yes. So, um, but yeah, it is the heifers uh, between that four and 12 months of age. Okay, great. Folks, we're gonna take a break. When we come back, we're gonna talk a little bit more about bangs and brucellosis and the wonderful program we have here in the United States. Learn a little bit more about it. We're lucky to have Dr. Smith here. Stay tuned, we'll be right back.
When it comes to stopping horn flies, cattlemen love their vet gun. Today they love it even more because vet gun now has a one-two punch with two vet cap insecticides. New AIM A abamectin can be used in rotation with AIM L for effective in-season control. Each delivers a unique mode of action to manage horn fly resistance. So start your in-season rotation program with AIM L and new AIM A abamectin vet caps from AgriLabs. Some call it a come from behind victory, an unlikely win, a reversal of fortune, snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. This is our moment, our victory dance, because we choose confidence. We choose Zuprevo for BRD treatment. Ask your veterinarian to prescribe Zuprevo. Zuprevo is a fast acting, long lasting BRD treatment that you can count on to get the job done. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprevo from Merck Animal Health. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council. Improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Justin Smith, who's a veterinarian and is the Deputy Animal Health Commissioner here in the state of Kansas. And as we're talking in the break, just because Kansas doesn't have mandatory bangs, some states do. Definitely. Uh, most of our western states do require cat food vaccinations, the Coloradas, the Wyomings, Utahs. So that is something to keep in mind. Even though in Kansas we don't require it, um, if you happen to be moving animals there or, or potentially be moving animals to them states, uh, you want to consider getting your animals vaccinated uh, just for that purposes only. And if you live in those states, obviously work with your veterinarian, make sure you get those heifers uh, in the states. Check with your state uh, veterinarian, your animal health commission, and make sure that your herd's in, in compliance with brucellosis, especially where they have elk herds and, Definitely. and, and wanting to keep the vaccination and, and things like that. Speaking of elk, mm -hmm. That was something we wanted to talk about with some of our, our wildlife or endemic infections. And it's not just elk, it's other no, species. It is other species. Um, there again, we talked about the, de the designated surveillance areas, the Yellowstone area. They have a tremendous problem within their bison herds and within their elk herds. And so uh, even to the point where um, they have started uh, programs to where they don't feed in the calving areas that these these times that these elk and these bison are calving up there to try to decrease the exposure that their domestic herds have with them animals. Uh, the big concern we have here in the state of Kansas is the feral swine. Uh, obviously we don't have a huge feral swine problem in the state of Kansas but we do have a problem and so uh, uh, brucella suis and swine is, is an issue for us. Absolutely issue. and and when we start to think about you know, you know, we never think about bangs and, and pigs. And, but when you start to think about all the problems that feral swine cause in this state and, and what they could be causing with disease too, uh, pretty, pretty dramatic. Very dramatic. And, and the, the brucella suis form of the, of the brucella bac uh, bacteria is actually more pathogenic than the brucella abortus that our cattle have. And so it is one of them things that we want to keep a handle on and make sure that we are. And so any of the animals that we harvest, any of the feral animals that we harvest, feral swine, we do do testing on them to try to determine our prevalence uh, for that and pseudorabies. It's important too for people to understand that this could be zoonotic. And if you're out there trapping feral swine or, or shooting them and, and eating them. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, the, the meat is good if, as long as it's properly prepared. But just know that as you're harvesting these animals and field dressing these animals, that if they are infected, you have the ability to be exposed. Okay. And, and uh, make sure that, that you uh, cook it. Yes, most definitely. <laughs> it has to be prepared. And that is that is probably the biggest uh, concern we have is, is in humans or the exposure we have is drinking unpasteurized milk or eating contaminated unprepared meat. Pasteurize your milk. Make sure that you cook your meat before you eat it. Thanks for being on the show. No problem, Dan. Appreciate it, it greatly. A great source resource for me, a great resource for a lot of people in Kansas and beyond, Dr. Justin Smith, who is the Deputy Animal Health Commissioner here in the state of Kansas. Folks, thanks for watching Doc Talk. Remember to always work with your local veterinarian. And if you want to know more about what we do here on Doc Talk, you can find us on the web at www.doctalktv.com. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson. I appreciate you watching Doc Talk this morning. I'll see you down the road.
Closed captioning brought to you by Vet Gun with Amel and new AMA Apomectin Vet Caps, the one-two punch against horn fly resistance from AgriLabs. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com. DocTalk was brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals.